Hi, I'm Jude Hotep, the goddess astrologer, now chemical initiatrix. We're going to talk about Friday's astrology and pull some cards. It's powerful time right now, very powerful time. So we're in this eclipse energy, this platonic eclipse energy until May 30th when the Gemini new moon happens. And then additionally, we this is the six month um, time period of this particular eclipse cycle with the Taurus solar eclipse and then this scorpio lunar platonic eclipse so a venus eclipse and then a pluto eclipse and venus is what we pull in what we're attracting to us what we're manifesting building abundance love nurturing um our turn on our sensuality and pluto is death and transformation and it's all of the deep uh dark murky crap that we need to clear up clean up purify to live this dream amazing life so this uh the sun at 29 degrees today so it's at the last degrees of taurus the 29th degree is often a very challenging time it is often um there's often tests, uh, lessons, you know, things coming up that you have dealt with during this whole Taurus season to be reviewed to, um, you know, it's funny with tests and all of that. I, I guess I'm like, who's the one testing you? Like, can you fail it? You know, I guess it's one of those things that, that we do keep learning until we, we get it. And what are we learning? What I understand about life so very clearly is that what we are learning are things much different than what our think our ego thinks we're supposed to learn. Our ego is dishing out lessons to everybody and ourselves that our ego lessons, ego, they're coming from the wound and hierarchy and status mm -hmm. and money. And it's really interesting because it's like our ego mm -hmm um learnings that what the ego thinks people should know people should get it together people should do this and it's really different what we're actually learning and so let's just say it's a crispy degree and the thing is is that mercury here in gemini is at one degree of gemini so it's protecting our heart when it comes to our mind and what it's thinking about and protecting our love, love being a frequency, a consciousness that we're embodying as light goddesses, leaders, pioneers on the frontiers, moving humanity out of the darkness and into the light, moving other light workers, other light goddesses out of the darkness and into the light, out of their spiritual uh, narcolepsy out of their spiritual misunderstandings and um, on just on their spiritual journey somewhere, not really at the highest at that they can be. So this is what we're doing as light goddesses. We are on the frontiers. We are really leading the way to move humanity uh, forward and bring light and really be the examples and um really helping people and everybody's at a different level do you help um light goddesses and light workers do you help um people who are really down and out that just need to even know that they have a light to shine you know like where who, what are the people what are your what is your ica who do you help it's important to kind of think about at this time because we are the pioneers and so it's this um it's this interesting time because this platonic, um, this platonic 22 degree Scorpio on the south node <laughs> eclipse, Mars is the ruler and Pluto is the ruler. Well, Pluto's retrograding Capricorn. Mars is at the last degrees of Pisces. So this Pisces energy with Mars can be delusion about what we're taking action on. It can be um the strangeness it can be um the you know the audit it can be just letting everything kind of just blend into nothingness um it can be not really um taking action it can be giving up on being the light goddess and holding your light and holding your ground 
It can be giving up on your mastery. It can be succumbing to the places inside you where you don't feel good enough or where you haven't, um, where you're not acknowledging the lessons where you've grown and everything. We have the moon today, Aquarius coming off of that, um, passing over, having passed over Pluto retrograde. And so the moon has gotten some information from Pluto um, and is and is trining mercury and then it's moving off that trine and it's moving up towards saturn over the next two and a half days and so it's this moon in aquarius it, it's energy that's very cerebral but we need to feel and allow our emotions it's so important because so much is turning up so much is shifting behind the scenes there's a lot going on and saturn and aquarius is saying are you are you still connected to things that you're not a vibe match with? Because it's time to let everything go from this old world. This, this eclipse is cutting away the old world, but we'll be spending six months making sure that we've cut away. But these next few months are about the new story with Venus having already been in Aries for a while and is at this, and is at this uh, 21 degrees with, um, with, Jupiter having moved it to one degree it's Aries now is is here and is in the semi square to Uranus in Taurus where it's it's funky it's saying are you is the story that you're creating an old one or is it the new one Uranus and Taurus is it about the new earth Uranus and Taurus or is, or are you living the old earth story you're living the matrix story you're living the terrestrial 3d you're living that I have to what will other people think other people said so um fear of losing you know Taurus energy we have to face our fear of loss we have to face our fear of loss and we have to realize that this Neptune Jupiter conjunction in Pisces on the 12th of April is just now coming into play in the helio so that the universe is just now catching up to what we've experienced on earth and there's a reason why we went through it first because because there was all of this spiritual messaging learning understanding that we needed to go through to like purge and churn out you if you've been crying if you've been going through deep emotions which most people i know this week are going through some deep emotional heavy stuff this week and that is the purge of the scorpio moon let it come up let it come out go through this period of time stop sweeping it underneath the rug that's what light goddesses do we we face our shadow because we know how to move through it because we use our spiritual gig bag we use our tools which you learn in alchemical goddess my coaching program you learn in light goddess if you're in our sisterhood join our sisterhood the links below uh we're having a first um, moon ceremony coming up the doors open hard in august where we'll be doing three particular th things that are going to be very powerful and you'll be surrounded by women who are on this path doing this inner work along with having a spiritual business that's raising humanity into the light so um you know the north node at 22 degrees here is it, it's just are you building is everything you do building the vision or clearing things out for the vision it's really important to understand this because what's happening over this next four or five days is so massive. 29 degrees Taurus is the Pallades. That's the representation of the light. I'm not into the alien situation personally. Um, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm still on the journey with it myself because the Palladians have told us has to have told us that they stripped us of our 12 strand DNA, but then they're helping us now because they need us. You know, what I look at it as is that there's always with all mythology, with all the mythology of the planets everywhere, there's us within every character. So if you take any story, the bad, the, the protagonist, the antagonist, we are all those things within ourselves. That's what mythology is really showing us is we are every part of it. And to look at our shadow and to stop projecting our shadow onto other people and blaming other people for our shadow. So, you know, when we get deeper, if we want to look at the Pleiades as this is the light worker call and 
it's this you know 29 degrees of taurus is exactly in this mercury at one degrees gemini this is where my moon is at on alcyone in the pleiades this is the pleiades and eros is at 27 degrees taurus this is the pleiades it's the last degrees of taurus and it's that one degree of mercury and that's the pleiades that's where the pleiades is at so um this sag energy exactly opposite you know gemini is where lucifer is at and this is the reptilian energy so if you just look at the reptilian and the pleiades as the light and the dark and that we do have yes darkness has many definitions the shadow within us it's the darkness um the dark moon phase where we have cyclical renewal but there's darkness in this world that is trying to um to spell humans into not being in their sovereignty and power that's what we're doing as light goddesses is helping humans to awaken to their power and sovereignty and to stop listening to an outer authority above themselves because they're afraid they've been selling us fear for a very long time but we can point to so many things the powell papers in the early 70s we can point to all the warmongering we can we we can just point to so many things why do you think this war is going on what's actually going on you don't know you don't know so are you joining bandwagons or are you actually focused on your light and what you bring in your spiritual business and living that highest life because that's the way you help humanity rise if you want to help anybody in the world that you feel bad for upset for or worried for or scared for even if it's your family or if it's someone across the country from you or whatever country you're in the way you help them is by raising the water which raises all boats so raise your tide yourself work on that that is where to focus it is not time to focus on other people right now there are are times for that but it, this is not that time it's time to focus on your people and your business who can step up into the light who are coming along for the ride or working on their shit and it's time to help yourself so let's pull the cards for today it's a very important powerful day and joy is always so important so don't get so serious on me even though it's serious like serious the star you know so yin energy it's upright um there is an importance to balancing all the action you take to self-nourishing proportional to that. Are you resource self-care and being fully resourced as a woman are two different things. And it's a, it's a journey that is ever evolving to really understand what resources you as a woman I'm on this journey with my schedule to understand what the fuck my schedule is all about I, I can't I have a Uranus schedule I can't do a Saturn schedule I have to do a Uranus schedule but my brain and my four Taurus planets didn't think that I could be successful doing that and sometimes can't understand and wants to exercise out of the way early in the morning and doesn't feel like it late at night and wished I could have got it done early in the day so I got it done and then I just go work out and everything fine you know it's just like so where is that for you um where are you being fully resourced like are you having novelty in your life are you doing the same old routines that will make you so fucking joyless stop that are you having novelty interesting things are you going to live your life and living the dream life i'm going to a concert tomorrow i'm seeing oh my gosh so i'm seeing this amazing band play with one of my all-time favorite bands and then the drummer went to school with these other guys that are playing with them and like the drummer is like one of my favorite drummers in the world he's like one of the top drummers in the world like oh my god God. Ah! he doesn't like one of the drumsticks he plays like jazz drums he doesn't even hold the drumstick it just like floats in his hand like it's just floats on the energy of his rhythm <laughs> like it's just so crazy and then jim pew this trombone player that plays notes that like don't even exist like way up here it's just like oh and i've like met all these guys too i've like been seeing him since like 2003 in new york like at the roseland in new york it's like so private and intimate so snarky puppy this band this jazz band that's playing with steely dan tomorrow in portland oregon I saw them many times, but I saw them play on a stage where it's tiny stage. They have 14 fucking band members. They had upright, they had congas, a, a drum kit, guitars, bass, all of that, plus an upright piano. 
And my God, the other instruments they had 14 musicians with all of these instruments on this tiny bar stage in a bar. So it's just so amazing. And they used to play with this chick, Francesca Johnson, that has this 40s voice. That's just like, oh, like, man, if you can go listen to the song, I don't I can't I know you can find it somewhere, but I can't remember. But it's called like People Make the World Go Round. It's a cover. But but they the way she sings, it, it's just like, oh, my God. And I get to see them tomorrow. I'm just like so fucking excited. So it's like, make sure that you're getting, you know, shit cleaned up, the rest, being fully resourced, having fun, living the dream life. Stop having excuses that you can't do it. And and don't let money be one of the excuses. Fuck that. Come into Alchemical Goddess, my coaching program. We deal with that shit. All right. All that glitters is not gold. Realize that there's a lot of spells. There's a lot of fake shit. There's a lot of spiritual inauthenticity right now. There's a lot of fake spirituality in the spiritual community that we all have to be responsible together to to purge to clear up these misunderstandings and to help people wake up from the spells and conditioning within the the spiritual community where people are just so backwards and and like i keep hearing people talking about food like talk like do food for you the way you need it but quit telling everybody that they're going to be eating air and light and plants and living off that I got so sick in 2020 because I was not eating meat and like now I eat meat and I was a veg, I was not a vegetarian, but I was a non meat eater for, for eight years dedicated because I was like, I'm not going to eat my dog. I'm not going to eat this beautiful cow. Well, I'm eating cow, man. <laughs> I'm eating cow. I don't eat chickens, but I'm eating cow and the, and the random turkey. And, um, and it's just like the Native Americans who knew that this was sustenance and nourishment and everything and, and gave that um, you know, that sacred blessing and gratitude for the animal, but knowing and understanding that everything is a part of it all that they need it. And also just the sacredness of the animal giving its life. So, you know, that's just an example. Um, where's it at in your life? So let's move on here. Peace. So I got this also for my reading on my Instagram, which I do daily card readings with some astrology filtered in on my Instagram at peace hotep. So you can look there. I also put my hand balancing and circus artistry there. I'm a juggler and a hand balancer and a foot archer. And so I put that stuff there and I'm traveling around the country and, um, you know, just working on some massive, cool living life, um, stuff here. So, um, we got peace, but it's in reverse. So where's the peace? within yourself there's a lot of disturbances in yourself and it's okay if you're going into the shadow to do that work if you're not going in to do that work then what's going on then then you you can't be at peace um if you don't face the shadow and you can be at peace while facing the shadow but that's a little bit further down the spiritual journey with a lot of healing depends on where you're at and it's not linear imagine so you're not you're imagining, but you're visualizing doom. Stop visualizing doom. Stop creating that experience of your life. Imagine the life that you want to live. Imagine what you want to see and experience. And if you can't do it on bigger levels, do it on small levels. Imagine the next great meal. Imagine a great night's sleep. Imagine a beautiful day tomorrow and the feelings you want to activate within you visualize the good believe in the good there's something going on right now in the collective where people aren't believing in the good and, and i get it when you beat your head against the wall and nothing's worked in your life however we have to really re-narrate restory the reasons why those things didn't work it's because they were coming from the ego and not from the soul life because they were misaligned they weren't aligned with your spiritual journey because you were wanting ego desires status money fame prestige and not actually wanting to do the important life got us work you know there's all these reasons why so a leg up that you don't think that anyone anyone can help you and you're not asking for help you're not asking for assistance it's the ego you're not having you the humility to ask for the assistance you need to realize you can trade gifts you have gifts that you can trade others for their gifts it doesn't have to be money always being the exchange of value you can exchange the value if you have marketing skills and someone you know has 
you know, has um, coaching skills and, you know, you can trade and get the coaching you need and they need marketing, like trade skills, trade your gifts. This is the new economy that we're living in and we're going to have to help each other. We're going to have to connect. We're going to have to realize it's not the matrix money life that you're an individual by yourself on the mountain in the mansion and you just pay for everything that you need. No, we're going to have to be in community, connecting with people, trading gifts and loving each other and being in community and trading our beautiful um, different things that we offer. Ask for assistance, ask for help. You're not in it alone unless you're just not asking for help. And yeah, it takes humility. Yeah, it takes losing some ego identities and getting your ego shot down and facing where you feel unworthy to ask for help and why. It doesn't even make sense. We all need each other. We all help each other. We all show each other our value. Happy, happy also in alignment, meaning that you need to get in alignment with your joy. You need to do things that are joyful. You need to play. You need to get rid of the seriousness. You need to stop. You know, it's important to face the shadow and do the emotional work. But right now the cards are really saying and the astrology is saying is that you need to tap in to your joy. It's the number one thing right now. Go play, go find what makes you happy. That's not escapism. That's not addiction. That's not old patterns. Find what makes you happy in your soul and lights you up and then go into everything you need to do. And sometimes that's just getting shit cleaned up, things organized, you know, the laundry done, the errands run, the grocery, the fridge, the fridge full, you know, getting fully exercised, getting all your files cleaned up. And sometimes that's actually like going skydiving or doing something adventurous or going to the spa for the day or whatever. Chaos and conflict that the feminine, um, we do have this, this, chaos and this the seeming breaking apart breaking down things falling apart before we have the rebirth happen and so don't story and narrate it as something that's not just part of cyclical renewal that's normal and natural and okay like yellowstone had uranus a uranus moment and burnt down but the scientists and and arborist said that you know it took 30 years but the the forest has never been this beautiful and 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 in great shape as it was after that fire so we have to realize that the fires the chaos and conflicts grow the new life and to stop storying it as catastrophe and disaster that's just thoughts and that you're not managing your mind when you're doing that treasure island but it's in reverse that you're afraid that you're not going to get what you want that you're afraid that you won't have the money and the abundance and the love and the soulmate relationships you have to handle that like how can you face that what is it that's blocking you from that where are you not doing the grieving where are you not feeling the sorrow of what's come before the dreams that you wanted that didn't work out the things you thought you wanted that you didn't even know you didn't or weren't part of who you really are the ego identities the identities that you thought you were that you're not like where is all of that and are you facing the sorrow and the grief and going in and doing that powerful work come into a complimentary goddess call for our chemical goddess that's my coaching program where you do that work supported by a coach believing in you all along the way as you grow your insane um, divine feminine power and restore your authority and your innate value we have a list she who grants wishes wishes desires hope so it is absolutely a magical time we have venus who goes and gets what she wants she's aphrodite she knows what she wants she knows her yes she knows her no and she's in aries and while technically it's at detriment it's actually a very powerful position for for venus why she's just kind of like not happy she's also um got the outfit on she is determined, focused, and she's very much like, I know what I want. I know what I don't want. Get out of my way. I'm doing this, you know, and in a loving way, but, but like, you know, anything that's not on my path, get out. Like this goes, this goes, I don't need this moving into it. Um, and then we have Jupiter and Aries with Mars coming shortly. Um, so we're going to have the divine feminine and we have the two benefics in Aries right now. It's about the adventure. It's about control and power and um, taking initiative on the new story that you want to live. We have Jenna, she who calms, stillness, purity, quiet. So there is this need, that yin card for going within and having some feminine 
stillness, some journaling, some crying, some getting it out, purging, um, the salt baths, and doing some yin yoga, some some yoga in general, uh, stretching, moving, dancing, twirling to music, painting, you know, have that time with yourself. It's what really matters. And then we have Manatili, she who remains, true worth, powerful devotion. So it's like no matter what goes down, she remains. She is here. And this is the truth of our soul that's immortal. The personality is what's mortal, the thoughts, feelings, physicality, and she's in her power, her hairs of flame. She is, it's just, she knows her worth and value. She knows who she is. She knows she's valuable. She knows she's worthy. She knows she deserves the best. She knows the gifts she brings to the world. She doesn't have to prove it to anybody. She doesn't explain herself and she's not mad or has a chip on her shoulder she's an inner ego it's it's just very much a certainty a clarity a sureness a, a just a goddess energy of taking up space and owning your power and your authority and very just devoted to love and to the heart and to the knowledge of the deservingness of the good in this life and taking up space in this life and being the powerful woman that you are. She who radiates Geneva, knowing ambition, confidence, so very much this Aries energy. And it's just that she radiates this confidence. She radiates this knowing of inner divine feminine authority. She's ambitious, meaning that she knows she can create what she wants. I know things didn't work out in the past, but that's the old story. And there were reasons why. And now chemical goddess, we deal and uncover what those reasons are. I had to go through that in my journey too. It's like, why did I beat my head against the wall for this for 15 years and it never worked out? And I had to understand and go through that process. It's never what you think it is. It's always a big surprise. It's deeply powerful. It's a retrieving of your authority, your power and the story of your life. And um, the lessons on the spiritual journey are way different and more profound than we think. And if you're not getting lessons that are way different than what you think the lessons are that everybody talks about, then you're, you're not going deep enough and you're not looking, looking enough. Um, there should be some real magic on your spiritual journey. I'm sending you lots of love for today. The Light Goddess podcast episodes for this week have been really powerful. The links below, the Light Goddess Sisterhood is all of us women sitting in divine feminine space. You're stronger when you're around strong women doing this work, doing this inner work. And uh, so you can come into that. And uh, I do... Um, these videos daily. If you want to book an astrology reading, you can do that at thegoddessastrologer.com. I'm sending you lots of love and I'll talk to you on the next uh, daily video.